So um, the octopus codec is in fact um, what we call in fact the outer codec for let's say the internal uh, term which is patented is the uh, is octopus yeah and in fact the idea behind is that we uh, want to have it in, in uh, uncompressed audio so the quality has to be uncompressed audio it has to be able as well to deliver in 96 kilohertz so 96 kilo 24 bit as you know our competitors cannot do that on the blu-ray disc or on, on um, they can only maximum deliver to 48 kilohertz due to let's say different reasons from their technology but our technology can do it within 96 kilohertz and having as well that same 96 kilohertz resolution so there is not any let's say concession that we are making because we are going to use this codec yeah um yeah and of course the backwards compatibilities they are like the fact that we stay in pcm and that we have this ultra low latency yeah uh is amazing yeah this latency from just a few samples yeah it's just amazing yeah so um the quality is of course the audio quality is one of the main things yeah so as i told you last time the speaker layout is one aspect of the the let's say the reason why auto 3d has that natural sounding yeah but a very important other component is of course let's say that we can deliver everything in uncompressed audio if you have the same 9.1 track and you encode it with the auto encoder and you hear it then then you hear exactly the same as the original if you do it with our competitors format you feel really there is a loss you feel really the sound is a little bit less warm less thin there's more artifacts we don't have that kind of issues with our codec yeah now let's um, let's talk a little bit because this is a full white paper that I can share with you. You, uh, you can find it, but I can send it to you too, which is explaining a little bit how sampling works. Yeah. So and this is, for instance, a sampling of let's say an, uh, a four-bit quantization thing. Yeah. And here you see the bit depth. Yeah. So let's say every every uh, bit is taken typically starting from the first three not yeah but then every six you have like six db yeah uh, for each bit yeah now as you know eight bit is one byte yeah so 16 is two byte which makes it digitally interesting to work with yeah uh, and the question was let's say how much dynamic range do we need uh, or do do we like, do we let's say what are the dynamic ranges yeah and here you see the dynamic ranges of the different audio formats yeah a cd can do like 16 bit yeah dvd audio blurry disc yeah digital dinner a pure audio that's all 24 bit and then you have a dynamic range from about 140 db yeah but what does that mean yeah if you see the dynamic range yeah i think that's very interesting here i have a very interesting uh example the Galaxy Studios hole, yeah, you've seen our hole here last time in the picture. I sent it, uh, show it to you, yeah. That has a background noise air on from 14 uh, dB SPL, which is very, very, very silent, yeah. Now, in a good recording studio, yeah, uh, typically it's like about 20 uh, dB background noise, yeah. In a good cinema theater, yeah, and same like in an, in, in a living room, it's about 30 dB. Uh, let's say SPL yeah and then on top of that you have the dynamic range yeah so if you have let's say with speech that's the dynamic the con con uh, let's say the conversational speech is about 60 db yeah here you see chamber music uh to 75 db applause in an auditorium about 85 db yeah the subway the, tr the tractor farm 90 db yeah then you go even higher yeah like a French horn of an orchestra or like a diesel truck, yeah, a full orchestra, 105, yeah, and then like a snare drum on a speak is like 110 dB SPL, yeah. Um, so if you see then the, um, the SPL, if you take that kind of SPL minus the dynamic range, yeah, then that's, that's very interesting because that means the dynamic range is only like 90 dB that you need, yeah to represent it so and the paint threshold is about 120 db so the dynamic range paint minus threshold. yeah so if you take let's say the 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 paint threshold minus the let's say a very silent room then with 100 db dynamic range you can in fact serve almost all kind of natural sounds and whatever you want yeah so cd was not that far off yeah 
And in fact, <coughs> if you hear the difference between 16 bit and 18 bit, yeah, you can still hear that, but that is very, that's a very, very small difference, yeah. But above 18 bit, yeah, and the dynamic range you need that, you can sometimes hear it there in the tail, yeah. But um, let's say the difference between 20 bit and 24 bit, you cannot hear, yeah. Additionally, there are not there are no AD converters yeah, or DA converters. If you see the DA converters at playback, yeah, most of the top consumer products are limited to 20 bits. Yeah, here you see the different kind of DA converters and the dynamic range that they can give. Yeah, and I think I, we have them here in in the range. Yeah, you see here most of them and very most the popular, even the professional ones, they go to 20 20 bit one uh, uh, thing as well. Yeah, so that means. There is room, there's like a few bits, and this, these are the least significant bits. This is a kind of a noise that you cannot hear even on a consumer uh, on a consumer um, device because there are no 24-bit uh, DA converters in, let's say, in the consumer world. Even 22 bits is very rare. Most of them are limited around 20 bits. Yeah. So if you did now a signal from 20 bit to 20, from 24-bit to 20-bit. You cannot hear that difference at all yeah but what you can do is you free up four bits and with this four bits yeah uh i found together let's say um let's say with an, an codec engineer yeah which is an amazing guy Guido van den Bergen, yeah and he developed mathematical solutions and we worked on solutions to bring let's say two channels into one channel and using for that combination just four bits we have to understand it very well because sometimes people think that we use the high channels with only four bits to bring it in the lower channels. That's not true. We bring two 20-bit channels into one channel. Yeah, That becomes 24-bit. And the four bits, which are just like a noise that you cannot hear. Yeah, It's like a white noise. Yeah, Those are used yeah, to uh, allow the decoder to reveal out of it again the original sound as it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's in fact the way very shortly described. Yeah, you see here this is the kind of a thing. Yeah. So the 24 bits is what the full dynamic range gives, which is interesting during the workflow. But as a delivery format, you don't need it anymore. Then you need in fact 18 bits maximum. Maximum. Yeah. So there's like even up to to, to six bits, yeah. And that's that's what we used, let's say to create the the architecture and the mathematical solution. So this codec works like a lossless, the same principle, the same mathematical principles being used for, let's say, an, um, a codec, yeah? an, a lossless codec. These are, let's say, these are the same principle. This is, there's no psych acoustic optimization or something like that. And that's the reason why this can be so fast. Uh, as you have seen in the demo, it is only two samples for each channel that, in fact, the principle of the technology is using. Yeah. But it's a little bit technical, but let's say the, 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 the thing is, the moment when I found out yeah, that it is working fantastic for two channels, I thought, why not doing with three channels? Because then we can use three channels into one. And perhaps, Joe, this is the moment when we can explain very fast, uh, yeah. because three channels can be used for bringing our three three level system, yeah, the three layer system, into a five point one delivery form. Yeah, that's the way. For instance, the movies are uh, released in Auro, so people at home as well they have the five point one. If they don't have the decoder, the Auro decoder, they hear the normal the normal exactly same master as the five point one, and movies went out like, for instance, Spider Man. The 5.1 version was spread out worldwide in 5.1. Sony um, distributed that movie only in our encoded 5.1, which means that 90% of the cinema theater is not having an our system, but only the 5.1, so still the main standard everywhere. Yeah? They hear the 5.1 as it was intended by the creators exactly in the same way. But of course, the cinema theaters or the people at home who have the decoder, yeah, the decoder will reveal out of that 5.1 again the let's say the original auto 3d but we can use that same principle to bring surround sound into a stereo signal yeah so this real quick does anybody have any questions about 
what Wilfried has just said because it's a lot about how they're able to fit multiple channels on a single uh, channel, you know, by using those four bits. I mean, you know, usually what happens is after you're gone, Wilfried, everybody's like, you know what? I was thinking about it, and you know what? I don't think that's right because it's, I'm like, why didn't you ask? Well, he was here. He's he could have done it right, He's right, right now. Answer. This is the time. Yeah. You yeah. have a question, you don't agree, you think that so, maybe that's going to degrade the sound in some way, this is your chance. Yeah. Don't do it later. I just, so I, I have a question. Uh, Wilfried, now, did you do this just due to the fact that the software, like Pro Tools at the time, didn't have more than eight channels? Is that why you had to come up with this? No, it was, there were two things. First of all, it was the limitation. I I couldn't see a solution that there w would come like a new Blu-ray format or like something oh, okay. like PCP. So that's one thing. But the interesting thing is compatibility. You have to understand that we have two creative masters and even three, in fact, because the downmix to stereo is in fact in the metadata as well. Yeah. Oh wow. So we have we have three masters in just one delivery format, and the bandwidth is the same. So we do not need extra bandwidth to deliver and the 5.1 artistic master and the R3D artistic master. And that has a huge advantage because let's say um yeah, you have two artistic masters in one thing, so you can uh, let's say for archiving for whatever it is it is a very interesting format yeah and there is no need for extra bandwidth which is unique to us as well because that's the reason why our competitors cannot put let's say um uh they need extra bandwidth on 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 let's say on a, on a blu-ray disc that's the reason why i cannot go to 96 kilohertz for instance yeah while we can do that we can keep we didn't have to change any spec on the existing deliveries. Mm. So the first Blu-ray player ever can play back out of 3D, which is not the case with our competitors' form. This was only the latest generation of HDMI who could do it. Yeah. So this has a lot of existing, let's say a lot of advantages from a compatibility point of view, and even more. And I have a surprise for you guys in this in this thing because I'm going to talk about something that we do now in streaming with this technology in Japan already mm -hmm. and that's something I can uh, highlight a little bit later but let's first go to the demo part yeah okay. is it if, if the full track is shared to the heights does that mean the full range bent down to 20 Hertz is also revealed yes of course it is we we have the full spectrum there is nothing changed in the spectrum it's the let's say the 20 uh 20 hertz of 20 kilohertz it doesn't mean it is the full range so we are not cutting out a part of it that doesn't uh, it doesn't work like that so the only thing is the 24 bit yeah we use four bits that you can never hear yourself at home yeah or like even in a professional thing these are not used in a delivery format yeah because as human beings yeah you are not going to extend your ears to more than 120 dB dynamic range, which means 140 dB SPL. Then blood comes out of your ears almost. <laughs> Does anybody ever disagree with you on that? I'm just kind of no. curious because everybody. I can imagine somebody would be like, no, I want that extra dynamic range because right. you see some of these guys fighting for like more, more everything, like every no. number just higher. I want my dad to have 140 dB of dynamic range. <laughs> and you know, Nothing so, else. <laughs> I... I, I I can add one interesting joke from uh, Tom Linkson Holman. Yeah, he said in one of the conventions, he said, "This is also right because you know you can only hear one time in your life a 24-bit dynamic range, <laughs> and then <laughs> your hearing's gone, right? And your hearing is gone." <laughs> <laughs>